press the D key in the scene view and change the background color to dark. Create a geometry node and dive inside. And I'm just going to use a basic sphere for this. I just ended up using some really random values for the scale and transform. I then turned the sphere into a fog volume using the VDB from polygons node. And I also checked the fill interior option. Apply a noise to the fog VDB with the volume noise fog node. Adjust the element size and offset, and I also turn off the fractals. And make sure I clamp the lower values to zero, just so we don't get any negative values. I then turn this fog VDB into an SDF using the convert VDB node. Smooth out the shape using the VDB smooth SDF node at default settings. Finally, I will convert all of this back into polygons using another convert VDB node. To create the vectors for our velocity field, I will use the polyframe node. Make sure the tangent name is set to N and the style is set to first edge. Another node you can experiment with is this tangent field node. This outputs four different vectors into separate attributes called field, which could definitely be used instead of the N attribute we just created. I then use the twist node to make the shape even more interesting. To cycle between different twist modes, you can press B in the scene view, which is what I'm doing here. I then output this geometry with a null node. To create the actual velocity field, I start off by creating a bound node and give it a small padding. I then create a vector VDB and activate it based on the bound geometry. Create a volume VOP and connect our volume in the first input and the shape in the second input. Dive inside and create a bind export node. Set this to output the vel attribute and the type will be a vector. We will use a point cloud lookup to reference the n attribute we created for our initial shape. If you ended up using the tangent field node instead of the polyframe node, you would input one of the field attributes instead of n in the point cloud filter node. To avoid having the particles collapse on top of each other when we advect them, I will use the project non-divergent node set to 25 iterations. Create a pop network with the shape in the first input and the velocity volume in the second input. Again, we can use null nodes to keep things organized. I leave the sourcing method to scatter on surface. And I set the particles to have a life expectancy of 2 seconds with a variation of 0.5 seconds. I also turn off probabilistic emission. Create a pop advect by volumes node. Make sure it's pointing to the second context geometry and set the advection type to velocity with a velocity scale of 4. I also set the advection method to trace midpoint. 
change the point visualization to pixels and also hide the particle source. Let's see what happens to our simulation if we try to turn off the VDB project non-divergent node. We can see the particles start clumping together and collapsing on top of each other. To create even more interesting particle movement, let's use a pop wind. Since we are not dealing with any collisions in our simulation, I also turn off the enable collision detection in the pop solver node. For the final sim, I ended up using a birth rate of 7.5 million particles. Also make sure you turn off the max points per frame limit. Let's make sure we delete any unnecessary groups and attributes before we cache this simulation to disk. I set the attribute delete node to delete non-selected. We only need to keep the age, life and ID attributes. Now before we cache this to disk, let's just recompute the velocities to get accurate motion blur using the trail node. I will now cache 120 frames to disk. To color the particles I will use a point pop. And the colors will be based off our velocity attribute. I then output everything using an output node. This is the final result of the simulation and you can download the project files with the render setup in the video description. Before we get into the quick composite, I just want to share that the Foundry are currently doing a promotion for Nuke, where you can get a Nuke license for 90 days for free. So I will leave a link in the description to this if you're interested in trying the software. What I did for the composite was that I rendered out the particles from two different camera angles. And the, let's start with this left side here. So I start off by denoising the image using the Neat Video Reduce Noise plugin. So you can see that this does a really good job in these type of areas here. Then I do a trick with three different blur nodes. So I have one blur at size 100 with a mix of 0 0.05. Then I have another one at size 200 with an even lower mix value. And I have a final blur at 300 with an either, even lower mix here. Then I do some contrasting with a grade node. And finally, I use a vignette node just to darken the edges of the image. Finally, I just export this image using a right node. For the other side, I thought the highlights were a bit too blown out. So after again denoising, I use a grade node just to reduce the highlights a bit here. Then I do the same trick with the three blur nodes. And again, another grade node at the end to add some contrast. Then I use another vignette node. And I export this in the same way with a right node like this. So that's everything for the composite. Thank you for watching.